Alright, so your midterm is going to have a few of our irrational, rational, real numbers, complex, imaginary stuff that we did from quarter one. So, I can't ever forget this stuff. Number this first one, the fourth root of 96x to the 25th. Let's break down 96, and because it's a fourth root, you're going to undo powers of 4. So, 96, start punching it on your calculator, start dividing it by... Uh, even so you can divide it by 2 so you can go 2 and 48 find all the primes 2 is prime 48 is a 6 and an 8 6 is a 2 and a 3 8 is a 2 and a 4 okay there we go so we're going to rewrite this as the fourth root of let's count up all our 2's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 2 to the 5th times 3 to the 1 times x to the 25 okay so this fourth root is going to undo powers of 4 so all right can't remember where we were but anyway they're going to come out in groups of 4 so this fourth root is going to undo all powers of 4 so as long as i have 4 or more stuff's coming out and i have 2 to the 5th that means i have at least a power of 4 in there so you can rewrite it as powers of 4 so 2 to the 5th I have 5 twos so that means I've got a power of 4 and I got one left over so this fourth root is going to undo that power of 4 and that means 2 is on the outside but there were 5 so that one left over stays that 3 to the 1, I don't have enough, so it stays. Okay, now I have plenty of x's. I got 25 x's. So the question is, how many 4's are in 25? And I know that 4 times 6 is 24. So if I write them as 24 x's, and then there's got to be one left over. Okay, this fourth root is going to undo a bunch of these fours and if I've got 24 of them that means it's going to undo six of them so that means six of these x's come out okay and what stays in is a two and a three and an x so it is six x and you have to still put in the answer you've got to say it's a fourth root so 2 comes out, x to the 6 comes out, whatever comes out you times together, 4th root of 6x. Okay, the second one, um, you can simplify this fraction right here. Before you do anything, that is like 2 6 You need to change that to 1 third. So here we go. We got 5 square root negative 1 over square root 3. Okay, so we got one third. Now, this is a big red flag right here. So attention, 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 attention. If you ever have a negative under a square root, you need to take it out. And that is the definition of an imaginary number. So I'm going to have five. I'm taking the negative out. That's imaginary. Square root one over square root three. And square root one, that's a perfect square. That's just 1. So you just got 5i on top times 1, which is just 5i. Okay, on the bottom you got square root of 3. You can't have an irrational in the denominator, so you've got to rationalize it. So you're going to times this by 1, and the 1 you're going to choose is square root 3 on bottom and square root 3 on top. So if you times your tops, you got 5i times the square root of 3, and that is just 5i times the square root of 3. And on bottom, if you times your bottoms, that irrational is going to turn to square root of 9, which is rational. Square root of 9 is, actually, it's even a whole, whole number 3. So now your denominator is nice and rational, but your top has an irrational. And an imaginary, so it's kind of a mess, but that's alright. As long as your denominator is clean, we're in business. Okay, next one. You've got six imaginaries times the square root of twelve and squared. 
times negative 4 times square root of negative 18 and cubed. Um, Alright, here we go. You're going to multiply. You're going to multiply the outsides together. So, 6 imaginaries times a negative 4 is a negative 24 imaginaries. Okay, you're inside. So, same thing right here. Big, big deal, big deal, big deal, big deal. Huge red flag. If you got the square root of a negative, you need to take that out. And that is an imaginary. So, it's actually 6 imaginaries times by negative 4 imaginaries. And 6 times the 4 does give us the negative 24. But imaginary times imaginary is a negative 1. And a negative 24 times by a negative 1 is actually, so on the outside here, we actually have a positive 24. Okay, so that should probably be move 1. Take that negative out, make it imaginary, then times your 6 imaginaries by your negative 4 imaginaries, and you should end up with a positive 24. Okay, now on the inside, I have a 12 times an 18 times n to the 2 plus 3. So a few times letters, you're going to add the exponents. And now let's just start busting up. Bust up 12. That's a 6 and a 2. That's a 2 and a 3. And you can bust up 18. That's a 9 and a 2. And that is a 3 and a 3. So... I'm way out of room, so I'm going to come up here, 24 times, I'm going to count up all my 2's from my 12 and my 18, just total them up, 1, 2, 3, so I'm going to have 2 cubed, and my 3's, I have 3 cubed, and my N's, I have 5, and since there's no number here, it's just a regular square root. So it's going to undo powers of 2. So they come out in groups of 2. Now, I've got 2 to the 3, so I've got 3 2's. So this power, this square root, is going to undo a power of 2, which I have 1, but I had 3 of them. So 2 cubed, that's like a 2 squared times 2 to the 1. So it's going to kill this square, but i got 1 left over. So underneath, I've got one left over. Same thing's going to happen to my three. I've got one square in there. So I'm going to bring a three out. And I'm going to have one left over. Okay, now into the five. How many squares are in five? N squared, N squared, N one. That's a total of five Ns. Two, two, one. So the square root is going to actually undo two of my squares. And I'm going to have one left over. So that means I'm bringing two ends out. So now total on the outside I got, it's all one big times problem. So u times n times n times 24 times 2 times 3. 24 times 2 times 3 is, on the outside you've got 144, and n times n is n squared. And on the inside you've got 6n. So if you times the 2 and the 3, that gives you the 6. And there you go. So you did have two imaginaries. This was imaginary and this was imaginary, but your result is real. Because an imaginary times an imaginary is a negative 1. Okay, now your fourth expression um, is an addition. And these are probably the hardest. So you have three terms here. You're going to add like terms. But none of these are like terms. Square root of 45, square root of 6, square root of 20, they're all totally different. But let's simplify them. 45 is a 9 times 5. 9 is a 3 and a 3. So that is 3 squared times 5. And that square root is going to undo that square. So you're going to swap it out for a negative 3 square roots of 5. 6 is done because you just have a 2 and a 3. So you got no doubles in there. Minus 3 square roots of 6. 20 is not done. 4 and 5. There's my square. 2 and 2. 
So it's 2 squared times 5 to the 1, and that square root is going to undo that square. So 2 is out, and there's already a 3 out, so you times them. So that is 2 times 3 is 6 square roots of 5. And now this is like terms with this. <clears throat> so negative 3 square root of 5 plus 6 square root of 5 is just the same as negative 3x plus 6x. So you just add the numbers in front. Negative 3x plus 6x is going to be 3x. So this add this is going to be 3 square root of 5 minus 3 square root of 6. So you're left with two terms. Okay, now um, radical to exponential form. So if you remember this, if you have like 2 to the 3 fourths, that is the same thing as the fourth root of 2 cubed. So this is exponential form, this is radical form, this is one way to look at it, this is another. They're the same thing. So let's bust up 81. 81 is a 9 and a 9, and that is a 3 and a 3, and that is a 3 and a 3. So, 7th root of 3 to the 4th. Now, if you morph this into exponential form, it is going to be 3 to the 4 sevenths. So this goes in the numerator, this goes in the denominator. Okay, let's look at this guy. There's a couple ways to do it. Um, you could break down 25 and go 5, 5. So you could swap that out. So you're going to go cube root of 5 squared times x to the 6. Okay, now you need to write it in exponential form. So it is going to be 5 to the 2 thirds times x to the 6 thirds. So I'm going to do this one individually and then this one individually and just times them and that can be simplified so your final answer is going to be 5 to the 2 thirds times x to the 2. Or if you didn't break down 25 to 5 and 5, if you just call it 25 to the 1 then it would be 25 to the 1 third times x to the 2. So either of these would work. Okay, now let's go backwards. Let's go in reverse. Let's take the exponential form and write them in radical form. Okay, so you're timesing. Anytime you are timesing, x to the 1 fourth add 2. You are going to add your exponents. So First on your calculator, if you go 1 fourth, add 2, you are going to have x to the 9 fourths. Okay, now if you morph that, you're going to have x to the 9 fourths. So the fourth root of x to the 9th. Okay, now that fourth root, you got to simplify it. So let's take out as many 4's as we can. And you got 9 in there, so that's a couple 4's. That's actually two 4's. Because if you write this as x to the 4, x to the 4, x to the 1, that's another way of writing x to the 9. So this 4 through undoes that one, undoes that one. There were two 4's in 9. So x comes out, x comes out. So on the outside you've got x squared. And then you've just got 1 left over but you have to say it was a fourth root. There has to be a four there. Okay, last one. Um, the cube root of x to the fourth to the two-thirds. First, if you morph this and make it look like this, it's going to be x to the four-thirds. And you're going to raise that to the two-thirds. And if you are have two levels of exponents, you times them. So it's going to be x to the 4 thirds times 2 thirds. And if you do that on your calculator, 4 thirds times 2 thirds, you're going to get x to the 
eight ninths. Okay, now if you morph that to radical form, the x goes here, the 8 goes here, the 9 goes there. So they're going to come out 9 at a time. But you only have 8, so you do not have enough for any to exit. So everything is simplified as far as it can. You are done. Alright, how about this one? So now polynomials. So that's all. From here on out, we've, we're we're doing polynomials, which is what we spent the whole quarter on. Okay, polynomials. Now, this is a multiplication, and then this is kind of a subtract. So you must distribute. You must times this to this, and you're going to get 2x to the fifth. Then you times this to 1, which is just 2x cubed. Now you got to take the negative 5x and you have to take the minus with it. So negative 5x times x squared is just a negative 5x cubed. Negative 5x to the 1 is negative 5x. And then let's take the 7 to both. 7 to the x squared is going to be 7x squared. 7 to the 1 is going to be 7. Okay, then it is subtracting, and you have to subtract each of those three terms. So if you take the subtract to the x5, it's going to be minus x5. If you take the subtract to the 7x squared, it's going to be minus 7x squared. And if you take the subtract to the 7, it's going to be minus 7. Okay, now you have a ton of terms here. We've got like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 terms, 9 parts, 9 pieces. Let's add all your like terms. So your like terms, let's look for any x to the 5's. So you got one there and you've got one there. There's no number in front so it's minus 1x to the 5th. So if you have 2 of them minus 1 of them, you have 1 x to the fifth. Okay, those are done. Okay, now standard form is the biggest exponent to the smallest. So the biggest exponent is going to be 5. Then let's see if there's any exponents of 4. You put them in descending order. There's no exponents of 4, so let's go to our 3's. This guy and this guy. So if I have 2 of them, take away 5 of them. 2 take away 5 is a negative 3. So those are all my cubes. So 5, 3, now let's do your squares. 7 of them take away 7. So 7 take away 7 is 0. So I have none. Um, so I got no squares. Now let's do your powers of 1. And that is the only guy. Minus 5x. He's done. There's no like terms. And these two are like terms. 7, take away 7, that is 0. So that's actually your answer. And if you have to name it, this polynomial ended up with three terms, so it is a trinomial. And the biggest exponent, that's a 1, that's a 3, that's a 5. Degree 5 or quintic. Quintic is the same thing as degree 5. Five. So it's a degree 5 trinomial. Okay, a polynomial is shown. So this polynomial has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. So it's 5 term polynomial. And your biggest exponent is a 4. So this is a quartic polynomial. with five terms. There's no real name for it. One term is monomial, two terms is binomial, three terms is trinomial. Okay, so give me the coefficient of the third degree term. The third degree term is going to be the cubic. Dun, dun, dun. So there is the cubic. And the coefficient is how many of them you have. And you have negative seven. What's the coefficient of the first degree term? So they're asking you really how many you have. So the coefficient is just the number in front of the letter. So the first degree term is right there, and I have two of them. 
So that one's not bad. Okay, the next one. Which part or parts of the expression 4x plus 8 can also be considered factors? Okay, now factors, that's a times problem. If you shrink those both down, if you divide those both by 4, you can rewrite this as 4 times the leftovers x plus 2. So your factors are 4 and x plus 2. So your factors 4 works, 4 works, x x does not, you, it has to be the whole thing. This whole thing is the factor, not just the x or not just the 2. So the only one that's going to fit is A.